finding joy in Alzheimer's. It's like shining a bright light in a dark room and illuminating the hidden treasures there. It is a conscious decision to seek joy. Because let's face it, <laughs> Alzheimer's is a horrible disease. To watch someone you love with Alzheimer's fade away creates an unremitting sense of loss. My mom, Naomi Cohen, was diagnosed more than eight years ago. I was really not prepared for the disarray that Alzheimer's brought into our lives. I couldn't comprehend that mom had entered an alternate reality or that every emotion I displayed would be amplified in her behavior. I had to keep reminding myself that it was the disease affecting her, that her fear and tantrums and gaping hole in her memory were out of her control. Plunged into the situation, it would have been easy to give up, to regard mom as sick or place her in a care facility. Instead, I tried to reclaim the mom I knew was still with us. I wanted to see beyond the disease and to ease her journey with as much joy, love, and laughter as possible. Here are several ideas that have helped me navigate the daily absurdities and frustrations of Alzheimer's. The first, when in doubt, sing. We know that Alzheimer's brains contain music almost until the end. So for me, that means knowing the songs that my mom loves. And despite my inability to carry a tune, belting out those songs with enough enthusiasm to get her to sing along. And my mom, she has a beautiful voice. Another idea, improvise. It must be lonely to encounter a constantly changing world where your perception of reality is faulty. Each day brings new and frightening challenges. Mom may not remember how to brush her teeth or put her shoes on or feed herself. She needs my help. But what worked yesterday to soothe her may not work today. This is a by the seat of your pants operation. And a third idea, live in the now. The power of the present allows mom to enjoy life, to sing and laugh without the pressure of remembering the past or planning for the future. So imagine, if you will, an intimate scene, my mom undressing to take a shower while I act as her personal coach. That's right, take off your nightgown. Oh, no, no, don't take the towel into the shower. We want it to stay dry. This, this is soap. We rub it on our skin to clean ourselves. When the water is the perfect temperature, I usher mom into the shower. Then I start to sing. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man, la, 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 la. Before you know it, we're having a singing fest in the bathroom. And mom doesn't need to think about what comes next or her fear of the water. Singing has allowed her to shower with joy. Or another example, mom has a doctor's appointment and it is my job to get her there on time. We have to wash and dress, eat breakfast. We have to gather up all our papers. We have to leave with enough time to allow us to amble as we walk. Never mind that she's put a cookie in her mug instead of a tea bag, or cut her toast with a knife and fork, or poured her juice on her cereal and milk. Her clothes are laid out on the bed, and I leave her for a few minutes to take care of my own needs. When I return, <laughs> mom is wearing three pair of underwear, two skirts, and mismatched shoes. How do I get her to change into something more appropriate without forcing her and without making her angry? No amount of rational explanation will work. Mom has lost the ability to understand. So instead, I improvise. Distraction is a great tool, as is humor. If I drum my fingers on the side table to the tune of the William Tell Overture, 
Mom starts to hum along. We laugh, and her mood changes, and quickly I redress her, put a hat on her head, give her a bag to hold, and we're out the door. How challenging it is to see mom's behavior, the life she lives with its many limitations, as positive. We are constantly aware that Alzheimer's will eventually claim all of her. When I think about the future, I can't always keep my emotions in check. In my darker moments, I cry for the loss of my beloved mother. Mom taught me many things when I was growing up, some quite practical, like how to check eggs in a carton before you buy them. Others, intangible, that children thrive when you love them unconditionally. She always projected an overwhelming optimism as to what the future held. Each moment in the now that I can be with Mom, feel her, touch her, sing with her, love her, hug her, is infinitely better than what lies ahead. And so I achingly accept her replacement, the sweet, simple woman who has trouble remembering who, my, who I am. It doesn't matter how many times we sit in the same cafe or wander the same streets. What matters is that we're together. I crave those moments of absolute joy and laughter as much as she does. I'd like to end with a poem I wrote for my mom. It's called Frog in My Throat. There's a frog in my throat, I tell her. I had wanted to humor her, but she's asking how it got there and do I need her help to get it out? We sing the song she taught me, frogs jumping on Pharaoh's bed and head, his toes and nose. Then she tells me, I found my nose. I have noses. I have husbands with noses. I'm writing a new song for the two of us. It's filled with sparkling laughter and an uncommon love. For the mother as child, for the daughter she no longer recognizes. Thank you. <laughs>